All credits go to News Nation for the news video clip. Tonight on our Missing series, it is a case that appears tragic on the surface, but becomes complicated as you dig deeper. The disappearance of Chance Engelberg has left the town of Garing, Nebraska frustrated. The father and husband vanished in July of 2019, more than two years later, after continued searches, there has been no sign of chance. But concerns continue to grow that something bad may have happened. Tonight, you are going to see exclusive surveillance video of the last time that Chance was seen and hear from nearly everyone involved in this case. Here is investigative correspondent Rich McHugh. 25-year-old Chance Engelbert was a cowboy at heart. Putting himself through college on a riding scholarship. Feel pretty good to get that book on it. Yep. Right. Yep. And first one from college, so. Let's talk about that. Too. In 2018, he married Bailey, and they had a baby boy, Banks. The future was bright. He was looking forward to a new job at a propane company in Moorcroft, Wyoming, where the couple lived. But then, tragedy. During a 2019 Fourth of July trip to Bailey's hometown, Gearing, Nebraska, Chance Engelbert vanished. Um, so we have people searching, you know, walking along the canal now. According to Gearing police, on July 6, Chance was golfing with Bailey's family, and Chance got upset over comments how he'd be making less money at his new job. According to Bailey, Chance called and said he wanted to leave, wanted to go back home to Wyoming. She picked him up and drove to her grandparents' house in Gehring. And that, she said, made him more upset. He got out of the car and started walking away. He called his friend and best man, Matt Miller. So Matt, you were the last person that Chance called, is that right? Yeah. What did he say? Well, he said he, he got in a fight with his in-laws and he was wanting to come back to Wyoming to his house here in Moorcroft and needed a ride immediately. That was four hours away. There's just no way I could make it. When you spoke to him that night, did he sound intoxicated? No, he sounded upset. Matt spoke with Chance's mother, Dawn. So after Matt called, we reached out a couple times, his aunt, his uncle, my husband, um, just kind of waited, waited out. But Chance did not answer. Surveillance footage obtained by News Nation shows Chance Engelbert walking through Gehring around 7.50 p.m. that night. In the video, you can see Chance look at his phone and then take a 90-degree turn left, as if following a map. That last snippet of video, what do you see? I see a kid that had a mission and he knew he wanted out of town. An hour later, a powerful storm passed through Gehring with lightning and high winds. Around that time, at 9.08 that night, a text sent from Chance's phone to his aunt with an expressionless or annoyed face emoji and a confusing mix of letters. Then, according to the local sheriff, Chance's phone went dark. Nothing on his phone after 9.08, nothing. The next morning, Bailey filed a missing persons report. Family and friends mobilized immediately on foot, using drones, scouring the treacherous landscape. You know Bailey, Bailey and Banks. We just ask anybody to send any information. Two years later, still no answers. I see the video of him walking down the street on the surveillance cameras and I replay that every day thinking I'm going to figure out where and why. But nothing's coming yet. So this is still an active investigation. It is very much so. Brian Eads is the lead investigator on the case for Garing Police. Do you think that we're dealing with a homicide or simply somebody who might have had a tragic accident? You know, we, we always try to treat things as a homicide until they're proved otherwise. At this point, there's no evidence to show that it is a homicide, um, but there really has many evidence to show that it's not either. Investigator Eads says they've enlisted outside agencies, K-9 teams, they have conducted search warrants, polygraph tests, and still chase down leads. Early on, the theory was that Chance fell into the river. Is that still one of the theories? It's still one of the theories. His last known uh, proximity was in close proximity to the river. This is Martha Road, so we know that Chance turned here and he would have walked down this way. Amanda Waldron is a volunteer investigator with We Help the Missing, a nonprofit team of private investigators dedicated to locating missing persons. We're at Terry Lake, near where that camera caught the final images of Chance. So in addition to the river, this is one of the other 
kind of bodies of water that they say is strong possibility. Yes, we know that Chance uh, walked down the road right here in front of this body of water. There was a storm that night. It was raining. The weather was bad. So that has kind of led to believe that water could have been involved. Another belief is that Chance's disappearance was no accident. Some people say, look, there was a powerful storm that night. The river was at its all time high. Um, it's a very good chance that he ended up in the river and it's a tragic accident. What would you say? I'd say Chance was born and raised for that kind of weather. There's just no way it could take him. So you don't buy for a second this idea of a tragic accident? Not even a second, no. We put hours and hours and hours down there walking river bottoms and I don't think he's in a river. I think he's buried underground and he's hidden. If he got hurt by that storm, Mother Nature doesn't hide a body like that. Chance's disappearance has completely divided Chance and Bailey's family and friends. Dawn says she hasn't seen her grandson, Banks, in over two years. Are you in touch with his wife, Bailey? No. Why? Um, from her text messages, but she wants nothing to do with me. She hates me. She blames me for everything on that happened with Chance. I'd love to have an hour sit down with Bailey, for sure. That's the only person I'd like to talk to. Chance's wife, Bailey, declined to be interviewed on camera for this story because she says she's received death threats and fears for her safety because she says there's a lot of false information and accusations against her family. She did speak with me at length, calling Chance's disappearance and the mystery around it absolutely devastating and says she continues to work with the police. Quote, I told cops everything that I know. I've been completely transparent with them. I've never hid anything from anybody involved with it. They just don't like the answers that I have to give. We invited the police into our homes to do searches and we were all cleared by PD long ago. Investigator Eid says Bailey has been forthcoming from the start. All of the family members have been interviewed. Um, all of their properties have been searched by law enforcement. Um, in a case shrouded in mystery, Bailey said she hopes for some sort of clarity soon. I can look at different facts of the case, she said, and how he was as a person and essentially drive myself crazy with what could have happened or what did happen. But at the end of the day, I don't have any answers. I'm really ready for the day that we do have answers, though. Chance's family continue to search and have raised over $17,000 in reward money. I need people to know, and, and he needs justice. I, do, I don't know who did it to him. I honestly don't. I hope it's a stranger. I just want people, to, somebody knows. You see this town, it's small. Somebody's seen something, somebody knows something. And the mystery continues. Rich McHugh is joining us live tonight. Rich, um, what stood out to me uh, in reading about this case uh, were the in-laws and this apparent argument that may have taken place between them and Chance. Um, what are they saying tonight about his disappearance in the case? I've only been able to speak with two people on Bailey's side of the family, Bailey and her mother, Tracy. And I will say that um, even those conversations were, were hard to come by. Uh, I was speaking to Tracy for a while, and, and their position is the same. Um, they are very reticent to speak. They are rare because of there's there's so much information that's on the internet and has been been talked about that they say is false, and has has caused them great danger. They say, and so um, they say, look, they have nothing to hide. And as Bailey said, she's been very forthright with the police, uh, and when and they say that as well. Mm -hmm. And Bailey spoke to you off camera. You know, you, you got to hear her voice, but you know, the public hasn't, um, you know, in watching that story, you can't. So what was your impression of Bailey, how she's doing, um, what more she said? You know, this is a conundrum, Marnie. I, I, I was trying to speak with her for the greater part of about a month. And finally, just yesterday, I was able to connect with her. Um, I think she was waiting to see, you know, what, what type of story I was putting together. I think she was incredibly nervous. Everybody that I spoke to in this in, in this story on both sides, and even the, the authorities, I think were nervous to speak about this because it's caused such a rift. But um, she was reticent. Uh, she was nervous. She was she was very uh, careful with her words, but but she was also very honest and she answered every every question that I had. Uh, we, we spoke for probably about half an hour and, um, you know, it wasn't a fun conversation and um, I didn't sense uh, tremendous uh, emotion in her, but at the same time, she's been living with this for two and a half years mm -hmm. um, in this kind of the, this mess.
two families impacted and Chance has just vanished. Um, before I let you go, Rich, um, that text message is very odd. It's hard to decipher what that means. Did the family or anybody close to Chance have any theories about what he may have been trying to say or what was going on there? They don't know. They, they you know, in one sentence they say they don't believe that Chance even sent that text message. And the next, you know, you, you hear from Dawn, his mother, and she says that she truly doesn't know. So um, they're just, uh, they, they have no idea. They, they, they don't understand why he wouldn't respond or, or why they couldn't connect with him. And the whole situation simply does not add up to them. And they are just devastated. And desperate for answers. Rich McHugh, as always, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. And if you have any information about the whereabouts of Chance, contact the Gearing Police Department. They're on the case. That number on your screen tonight.